It's showtime. Please welcome your host from Kinda Funny, Greg Miller. What's up, Guild Wars 2 community? How are you guys today? How are you guys today? Oh my goodness, I love this audience already. Thank you so much for everyone here in Seattle for joining us in the historic Moore Theater. How are you guys doing today? I'm gonna need you to keep that energy up all day long, ladies and gentlemen. You have a whole bunch of developers back there who have been busting their buns making an amazing uh, showcase today for you. So please, when they get out here and you see something you like, cheer, give it to them. When they say something you don't like, boo them until you are a horse. <laughs> Just boo them until nothing else. Thank you, everyone, of course, for joining us today. Uh, is everybody ready to hear about Guild Wars 2 in the living world? Excellent. If you said no, you were about to have a very boring hour. Uh, we are going to be premiering the first look at the all-new living world story coming to Guild Wars 2. Everyone is so excited to share it with you. But before we get to all of that, please put your hands together and help me welcome game director Mike Z to the stage. Uh, thank you so much for all of you joining us uh, here in Seattle, those of you joining online. Um, Guild Wars 2 is a very, very special game because of this community. Uh, so, first and foremost, I definitely want to thank you for helping us celebrate this week the seventh anniversary of Guild Wars 2. <laughs> the love and passion that you all show this franchise is what drives us every single day. So, I speak for the entire team on Guild Wars 2, uh, when I say that we are pumped to finally show you and unveil the next chapter of Living World. But before I get to that, I want to take a quick brief moment to look at where the game is today. Since Path of Fire launched in 2017, <laughs> since Path of Fire launched in 2017, there has been an amazing amount of content added to this game. We continued the epic story in the Elonian Desert after the defeat of Balthazar and the struggle of emerging powers in the vacuum that happened thereafter in six episodes across season four. We put you face to face with Krakatork in two massive confrontations. Uh, and also helped you prepare Orin for the next chapter of Tyria. We welcome back two classic festivals, uh, Dragon Bash and Festival of the Four Winds, in addition to adding ad uh, additional content to all of our existing festivals. We introduced three additional mounts, the Speedy Roller Beetle, the Battle Hardened War Claw, and the Soaring Sky Scale, giving you all new ways to explore the massive world of Tyria. For our PvP players, we rolled out new maps, new rewards, we just started season 18, and very, very shortly, we're about to begin public testing of Swiss style tournaments. <laughs> On the world versus world side, we released private squad support, new rewards, the previously uh, mentioned war claw, and new live events. The next major focus for us is landing world restructuring, aimed at creating a more balanced and automated environment. Earlier this week, we also introduced uh, Cooking 500 to the chefs of Tyria. And they've been... So you can find even more delicious meals being made within the game. Dedicated players also now have more flexibility in customizing their builds with the introduction of legendary, legendary runes and sigils, uh, allowing you to create the perfect sat, uh, gear stats for any situation. And this leads to perhaps our biggest quality of life improvement for these dedicated fans. Character builds and gear templates are coming to Guild Wars 2 in the near future. <laughs> the, 
This means that players will be able to easily share their builds and switch between different loadouts with ease. You'll be equipped with the most appropriate gear for whatever activity you're doing, whether you're showing off in Lion's Arch, optimizing for raids, or getting ready for the next big clash in World vs. World, you'll have full control over your character's kit. All of these content updates, features, and quality of life improvements continue to be given for free with no monthly subscription fee. To the community, the team at ArenaNet is continually humbled and amazed at your streams, your tweets, your fan art, and most importantly, your support of the last two years. The stories that you share with us mean so much. We've aimed at making Guild Wars 2 one of the best valued MMORPGs on the market, and we couldn't have done it without your support. So, you may be asking, where do we go from here? Well, we're here to pull back the curtain on the continued commitment we have for Guild Wars 2 and the next chapter of Living Story. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to the new season. You do not fear death. You fear something far worse. You fear outliving the ones you swore to protect. You fear the day your children no longer feel the chill of the frost or the warmth of the flame. It is this fear that is your enemy, not I. The prison in which all races of Tyria suffer. But you need not fear me. Champion. For I can set you free. Join me, and you shall have the strength to protect your people in the trials to come. Stand against me. You stand alone. So, in the Icebrood Saga, there are whispers of a stirring trouble in the Northern Shiver Peaks, and we're gonna be putting you and your allies front and center as the threat slowly reveals itself. The Northern Reachers of Tyria are a blasted wasteland of ice and frost, the original home to the heroic Norn and the Char races. So, what this means is that we're gonna be pulling back the curtain on these two cultures to take an even more important role in the story. You're gonna be able to explore the personal histories of fan favorite characters like Ritlock and Bram. You're gonna to go toe to toe with the Ice Brood themselves, Jormag's twisted cult of Norn, who serve as avatars of the dragon's corrupting power. And we're excited to announce that the Ice Brood saga begins on September 17th with a prologue episode that will be free for all players who own Guild Wars 2 Path of Fire. But that's not all. <laughs> so, with the Ice Brood Saga, not only is now a great entry point for new players to come join us in Tyria, to get all of our free rolling updates, the new improvements, the new content, but beginning today, we are making it even easier for everyone to get into Guild Wars 2. When you purchase Path of Fire, starting in about 15 minutes, <laughs> Heart of Thorns, our first expansion, will be included for free.
This means that moving forward, there's one single purchase that gives you access to both the Maguma and its masteries like gliding, and the Elonian Desert and the mounts. So if you've never experienced Guild Wars 2 before, or have yet to try the revolutionary genre-defining mounts, this is the perfect time to jump in. For those of you who have already purchased Heart of Thorns and have enjoyed countless hours uh, in the Maguma, we want to show you our appreciation for your loyalty. And with that, we're going to release the support through an exclusive Heart of Thorns Veterans Pack. <laughs> this Veterans Pack includes a Mordrum-themed glider, a new title Vanguard, both of which can only be obtained through this, and a voucher for one of 16 possible gem store armor, ski, armor piece skins. For players who already own Heart of Thorns, or sorry, Path of Fire, but not Heart of Thorns, later this week you will exp receive the expansion added free to your account. All of this will start being rolled out early next week. Because, you know, PAX is kind of important. <laughs> so, from all of us on the Guild Wars 2 team, uh, we are incredibly thankful and humbled by your continued support for this franchise. We know our fans are the absolute best, and we you are what motivates us to push ourselves to create great content year after year. So from all of us, thank you. Let's keep it going for Mike, everybody. Huh? Were we happy with that? I know the one person up front with the, the woo, I know you're very excited, but that's what I want Let it. You guys are a great audience, I want you to know, because everybody back there, of course, yesterday in rehearsal, super like, oh my God, like, oh, are they gonna like it or what's gonna happen? And you guys are killing it, thank you so much. You like Guys, they like it. You did all right. That's just the start though, ladies and gentlemen. Sure, it's an amazing trailer, but let's talk about what's actually happening in Ice Brood. Please welcome to the stage alongside me, Julian Norton, and of course, Novera King, the narrative team. Come on out here. Thanks so much, Julian. Novera, how are you? Thanks for having us. Hi, guys. Is it a weight off your shoulders? Yeah. <laughs> People know now, you don't have to worry about leaking anything, yeah, you're okay. Yeah, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Um, I think, you know, when I got announced as the host for this, obviously I started going to the communities, talking to everybody about it. One of the big questions was, where are we going? What are we going to be doing? What, what are the inspirations for where you're going? You're obviously, Shiver Peaks, right? Uh, Ice Brood. What did you guys look to? What did you want to accomplish with the setting? Yeah, so Guild Wars 2 has a really incredibly rich lore populated with really fantastic characters, uh, and we've barely scratched the surface of that. So far, we've tackled three of the Elder Dragons. We've gotten Zaitan, Mordremoth, and Krakatoric, but there's three left. Uh, and we really wanted to get back to what makes the game great, which is the player races. And we haven't given as much love to the Char and the Norn as we've mm -hmm. given to the others. The Silvari had Heart of Thorns, and the humans kind of took center stage in Alona. So the Shiver Peaks really seemed to us the perfect setting to tell a different type of dragon story yep. uh, centered around the Char and the Norn. Uh, we're kind of wondering, what's the new status quo now that three of the Elder Dragons are gone to are asleep and we don't know what's going on with the third one? <laughs> Uh, they aren't what we thought they were, and we're starting to wonder, and it turns out Dormag is wondering what the new status quo is, too. I can't imagine he's happy. It seems like there's a lot going on in his world, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, got, he's got a pitch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, Novera, for yeah. you, what does it all mean? What does it all shake down? Well, part of the awesome thing about going to the Shiver Peaks is that we're going to have the opportunity to really get immersed into Norn and Char culture, which... I'm super excited about personally. Um, I think, you know, with Bram and Ritlock, we've had friends who are Norn and Char, Char and Norn. Um, <laughs> Bram and Ritlock, Norn and Char. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> These are the kind of things you gotta lock up I, now, otherwise oh, the oh Twitch chat yeah, keeps you is, alive, right? Yeah, don't, <laughs> no. Just nerves, guys, just nerves. A lot of you, hi. Um, Everybody, but, this is Novera, you can say hi back. Hi. Hi. Thanks, I feel a lot better. 
better now. Um, so part of what's awesome is that we're going to have this opportunity to really see their homelands and see Norn through Norn eyes and Char through Char eyes. And when we get to have that opportunity where we're immersed, we get to understand the nuances of those cultures, not just what makes them awesome to play, but who they really are. And you know, every culture, no culture is a monolith, right? So there, we're going to have lots of different opinions and points of view, and that offers us as writers amazing conflict and drama opportunities to bring you guys really stellar, entertaining content. I was going to say, what is that like for you guys, right? Because again, since the launch of Guild Wars 2, people have known about the Char, they've known about the Nora, mm -hmm. right? Like they want to know their characters based around these people. You've seen one, you've seen two. What's it like to now go and get invested in those civilizations? I think part of it is that, you know, especially with uh, our very first episode, where the prologue, Bound by Blood. And yeah, well, what's that all about? Why is it a prologue <laughs> and not episode one? That's a great question. Well, we want to have an opportunity to celebrate you know, this new era, Kraukatorik's gone, he's been, you know, a really dark force over Tyria for so long, and so we want this opportunity to really celebrate and, and have that time before we bridge into the next okay. event. So, <laughs> is that what we're calling? Uh, you know, it is an ice bird saga, yeah, so I feel yeah. like, you know. Oh, I got questions about that too, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> But I think part of it also is that with, so the first prologue episode, we're jumping right in with the Char. It is the All Legion Rally on the Char Blood Legion homelands. We're bringing everybody in. We've got blood, we've got ash, we've got iron. We've even got flame, y'all. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, that's what I was looking flame for. That's what I was looking for. Back. Flame Legion is back. <laughs> So it's sort of one of those, I mean, the Flame Legion, they are Char. They are part of Tyria. What is the death of Krakatoric meant for them? We're going to get an opportunity to see that, but also on a more personal level, I mean, let's think about the Char. They're a very um, military, group-oriented society that has a structure unlike anything else in Tyria. What does family mean mm. to Char? And with Ritlock, if anybody's been following his twine, he's kind of maturing a little bit in his outlook, but he's been away for a long time. So we're gonna have this opportunity to delve into his history and relationships. Um, you know, he mentioned the twine, he had cubs. Wink, wink, nudge, wink. nudge. Yeah, that's yeah. a thing. Um, but also, he has a relationship with the Blood Legion Imperator. So we're Bangar Ruinbringer, we're going to get to see him and spend some time with him, and the other Imperators are going to get face time too. Because, let's face it, it's the dawn of a new era. What does that mean for the Char? What does that mean for everybody? But does this mean the Char, the treaties that brought all the different races together, are those still valid? Some have questions about that. Is it time for all the legions to come together? Is it time for another Connor? Hmm. Is it time for a different path entirely? I think, you know, different well, characters. Tell us the answers. I know the answers. Are, I'm just giving y'all teases. These are just teases. You got to come and play. <laughs> but, you know, this is one of those moments where we're going to have the opportunity to see the different perspectives from different characters and see where that takes us. And then Julia can tell us more about the Norn. Can, yeah, the Norn. Uh, so, as, yeah, <laughs> give it up. Yeah, seriously, uh, So, uh, kind of each race in Tyria is connected to an elder dragon, and the Norn are the ones that are connected with Jormag, so they have a really personal history with this dragon. Uh, for those of you in the audience, maybe this is your first time coming to a Guild Wars 2 event, don't know a lot about the game. Uh, when the dragons first awoke, uh, Jormag drove the Norn out of their ancestral homelands, and they settled further south in this settlement called Holbrek. Uh, and the Norn had this prophecy about the Fang of the Serpent, which is one of Jormag's teeth yep. that they have hanging up in there. Uh, and the Norn, to crack that Fang, is going to be the one to slay Jormag and bring them back home again. Uh, in Season 3, Bram cracked that Fang. Good job. Uh, he also went to go slay Jormag and uh, failed pretty spectacularly. He showed back up. And uh, we don't know what became of his guild. We don't know what the repercussions are for the Norn who have this culture that's focused on legend and reputation. To go and do that and fail has some pretty meaningful consequences, and we're going to experience those with him firsthand. Uh, we've also got the sons of Svanir, who are a dragon worship. Boo! Right? Uh, they're a dragon worshiping cult. Uh, they worship Jormag. And uh, they're, all they, they're all dudes. We'll 
we'll get to that in the game. But um, <laughs> we're all here. Uh, but they've been kind of watching from the shadows for the last few years, seeing us kill Zaitan, seeing us kill Mordremoth, seeing us kill Kral Katorik. And this seems against their core values. This is good against their core <laughs> values. Uh, some keen players noticed some Sons of Svanir having some opinions about that at Dragon Bash. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, so we're going to explore that in a bigger way. Uh, and Jormag's kind of a little uh, anxious about that, too. Uh, the other things that we want to look at in the Shiver Peaks region are the spirits of the wild. Uh, the Norn follow these spirit guides. You can choose uh, if you play a Norn between snow leopard, bear, uh -huh, wolf. What? raven, and wolf. Uh, but we also have some ones that went missing. Uh, that when the Norn fled south, they stayed behind to kind of fend Jormag off. So that's owl, wolverine, ox. Eagle, and uh, we're gonna let you guys know what happened to them this season, too. Uh, yeah! Exactly. Yeah, you guys have been wondering about a lot of things uh, as far as the Norn are concerned. And behind me, uh, we've got the Codens. So you'll be visiting with them as well and learning more about kind of their relationship to the Norn. Now, I'm looking through the notes I jotted down in Julia. You just slipped up. No, I didn't. You, you I called it a season. Previously. It says very clearly, saga. saga. Yes. <laughs> I've seen the Twitch chat since the announcement. What is going on? Oh, what is no. the difference? Is yeah. this a full-blown oh, no. season? Is I, this a saga? Don't try to dance out of it. I gotta help my girl out. I gotta help my girl out. Thank you. Yes, all right. It is a saga, but that doesn't mean that you can, expe you can still expect the awesome episodic content that you're used to. The difference is we've now got four content teams, and so that kind of gives us a little bit of leeway on what a release is. Yeah, I mean, sometimes that's going to be a story-focused episode, but it could also mean on expanding existing content or focusing on another element of the game or trying a new type of content that we've never tried before. Um, so we also have some surprises we want to slide in. And I think the design team is going to speak to some of that, too, yeah. in a few minutes here. It's bigger than a yeah. season. It's a saga. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it feels point. like it gives you more leniency yeah. to, to try things, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's fluid. It's flexible. But the most important point is it's uh, the new chapter. It's, we're starting a new point in Tyria's history. We're moving forward. And we really wanted to make it a great, accessible place for new players who aren't familiar with the franchise to jump on and have a wonderful time. Yes. Okay. okay. Does that sound good to you guys? Yeah! Woo! I was worried about the saga versus season thing. I didn't know how that would go over. <laughs> Julia Novera, thank you so much thank for coming out. Thank you so much. So please, please, great work. Get back to making the game. Looking great. All this talk of ice rude. <laughs>